Okay, so I'd like to start by thanking Mathieu for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. Um, I think it's been a brilliant meeting so far. It's probably been one of my favourites. The, the, the fact that we can interact with one another um, and have the discussions as well in the talks, I think it's just been a fantastic idea. Uh, certainly my first experience of this. Um, so uh, thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to join in. Um, so my group's predominantly interested in, in membrane proteins, so proteins that are expressed uh, and sit within membranes. Um, in particular, I'm interested in bacterial systems, but I'm going to talk more generally today uh, about pretty much every single membrane protein structure that's been solved by a structural biologist. <laughs> um, so um, I work extensively with uh, structural biologists um, who have solved uh, quite a number of high-profile membrane protein structures, many of which are bacterial in nature. Uh, and so the idea really, much like many of you uh, within this room, is to take a protein structure, use high-performance computing, uh, and, and then get some dynamic information from that. And so we want to go from not just what's within the crystal, and uh, we can also bring back substrates and other interactions with drug molecules. Uh, but all, in particular, we want to know what uh, the, the lipid membrane interactions are with that particular protein. Uh, and the idea is that it's not just a one-way street, we provide the dynamics, we can then go back in the other direction. So the, the dynamics can then feed into the structure, maybe development of new crystals, and um, to then get you know, new membrane protein structures with other ligands bound. Uh, and how that then impacts on the function as well um, is also uh, incredibly important uh, to what we do. Um, so the number of membrane protein structures is now just over 3,500. Um, 3, uh, 3, um, so just a bit about that. The vast majority of those uh, are solved by the old-fashioned method now, um, X-ray crystallography. Um, Cry-EM, of course, we've had the revolution over the past few years, and that still sits at only about 11% of those membrane protein structures that have been solved. Uh, if we look sort of in the future, um, going you know, sort of extrapolating from this sort of uh, direction that we're currently travelling in, in about 10 years' time, uh, we'll have about 10,000 or so uh, membrane protein structures. And th this is really quite a, a small number compared to those soluble protein structures that are being sold, uh, which are in the hundreds of thousands. Uh, but this, this is currently where we're set, looking at at the moment. cryo yeah, might push this on a lot further um, so that uh, we, we get uh, a great deal more. Let's, let's hope for more membrane protein structures. So a lot of the work I'm going to talk to you about um, is very, from a very talented uh, graduate student, Tom Newport, who was in my group. Um, so this sort of expresses why some of these things are so difficult. Tom was brilliant within the three years that he was within my group, um, but he's now moved on uh, to industry. He's now working for Oxford Nanopore Technologies. Um, and so while he's done a brilliant job of setting up this database, it's really down to me to continue it, to sustain it or otherwise I'll turn it to other students to take it on, or postdocs to take it on. And what we do um, is we take a, a protein structure, we've identified within the PDB that it's a membrane protein structure, um, using various tricks, uh, predominantly looking for regions of hydrophobicity and, and alpha helical spanning regions that cross the membrane, or otherwise beta strands that are likely to be within an outer membrane protein. And we then convert from the atomistic representation to a martini representation. Uh, so this is the reduced representation that many of you, I'm sure, in the room are familiar with. We're going from four atoms down to a single particle um, in many cases. And we then uh, throw into, around the protein uh, lots of waters, ions, and also lipid molecules. And this is all randomly positioned. We're not determining where the membrane region is at the, at the moment. Uh, and then we run this coarse grain molecular dynamic simulation to then build the bilayer. Uh, and the bilayers generally form rather nicely around the hydrophobic core of the membrane. Now this uh, coarse grain representation may be uh, familiar to some of you, but certainly in terms of the structural biologists I work with, um, they're less keen on this uh, reduced representation. So we generally want to go back uh, to the atomistic level uh, to then disseminate the data uh, and share, uh, share with colleagues. We also want to extract from the simulation um, various results from that, um, to highlight key residues that might have key roles in lipid interactions, hi highlight key binding sites around the annular shell of the protein, and also show how the protein uh, might deform the membrane. Uh, how, how, how does the, the protein itself uh, impact on its local environment? 
And so this is the methodology. Here's your membrane protein that we've identified from the PDB. We have a rough idea what the membrane spanning regions would be. That's just by taking the sequence and running through uh, something like octopus. Um, we can then, uh, from this, bias the orientation of the protein just to make sure the bilayer does form. And so we put a random box of lipids around this region, which would be either the transmembrane region, extend the box and the, the z-axis, add the waters, add the ions, and then run the MD simulation. And spontaneously, the uh, bilayer will form around the protein structure. So this initial assembly process generally takes about 100 nanoseconds. We then extend that up to a microsecond um, of at least this coarse grain time scale. Um, so from there, that then gives you um, the, the information, the pipeline that I just previously talked about. That then goes into the, the, the MEMPROS MD database, along with links to various other external metadata, including data from the PDB, the gene ontology database, UNIPROT, the transporter classification database, uh, MPSTRUC, and also PFARM. And then for each entry uh, within the, the MEMPROT MD database, we then extract the metadata from these, uh, and then it's all shared uh, as one, one particular page. And the vast majority of the MEMPROT MD database is written in YAML, uh, and so is then uh, shared uh, using that tool that was mentioned earlier. Um, so these give you sort of tools in terms of sequence alignments between different entries, so those that are uh, similar entries, so say the same protein or within the same PFAM, uh, are then aligned with one another. Uh, we can then classify whether a certain protein is a transporter versus a channel, uh, and that uses some of the, the pre-prior annotations that come from Steve White's MV struct database. Uh, ultimately, this then leads to good touch text searching within the database, uh, and also allows us to do some more ensemble analysis of, of the data uh, within the database. And then we disseminate uh, with various views uh, and imagery, um, both static images, um, but also a molecular viewer that I'll also talk about a bit later. Um, so these are uh, all of these 3,500 membrane protein structures, and a couple uh, within this uh, data set one might recognize, so this is Reba and Eric's uh, Glick structure, uh, and then we have two uh, enzymes that modify LPS, and the so work of Carmen, uh, and also uh, Alexandra as well. Uh, so I thought I'd just highlight a, a couple of examples that might be of interest to this room. Um, one can also do a text search based on a user, so I just use Reba um, just to, to then show the, the network of interactions that uh, she's made over her scientific career in terms of the structures that she's solved. Uh, and here's just the interactions with uh, some of the colleagues, including Eric, um, who is who's here, uh, but not in the audience anymore. Um, <laughs> Um, so these are some of the images that one can browse through the MEMPROS MD database. And I'll just stick over this side. Um, so here's the original structure, and then we can show that structure embedded within a membrane uh, in either just showing the head group region or otherwise the full uh, lipid bilayer. We can then show the deformations around the protein structure from above, from below, and also at the side. And this, this protein, which is a scramblease, which uh, flips a lipid from one side to the other, actually shows quite a lot of deformation around the protein structure. And so usually you'll see for a membrane protein two dotted lines drawn top and bottom, Well, that's not exactly not the case uh, here uh, in this protein structure. It, there's a lot of deformation uh, within the annular shell around the protein. And we have more sort of gen uh, zoomed out versions showing the, the lipid protein interactions for the head group region, tail region, or otherwise interactions made with solvents. And this is color coded on either a, a cartoon representation or otherwise a surface representation shown here. Um, I know this is part of other databases, but we can also give you a topology and, and show uh, we, where the beta strands are, where the alpha helices that span the membrane are show the regions of the membrane top and bottom, and also show the, the change in thickness of the bilayer with respect to the membrane protein structure. Uh, so we're given a sort of bulk uh, distance here, and then it zooms in uh, when it gets close to the membrane protein to then either thin or thicken, uh, depending on the hydrophobic matching. <coughs> 
Um, this is probably a bit too much zoomed in, but this, this then gives you on a residue basis uh, each and every one of the lipid contacts uh, that are made between the membrane protein uh, and, the, and the structure. Uh, and I, I won't go into any more detail than that, just to show that you can actually see the crisscrossing of the alpha helical, uh, sorry, the, uh, the sequence uh, across the membrane uh, as described here. And that matches quite nicely with the, the contacts that are made going all the way through the bilayer from the, the head group region all the way through to the, uh, the tail. Um, so I was uh, do, doing a search in Memprot MD, and this was for Yana. And um, basis, these these are the G protein coupled receptors, uh, and we can do a, a, a sort of more um, collective uh, view of the A to A receptor. This is one type of G protein coupled receptor. Uh, within the database, there are 44 entries within the PDB, and so we've simulated all 44 of those different copies. And then we can see how similar uh, those interactions are uh, with the, the membrane. And hopefully you can see by this stripe-like pattern uh, for the hydrophobic contact shown in yellow, um, that there is quite a lot of similarity between each and every one of the simulations. Uh, so there is some reproducibility in, in terms of the simulations that we performed. And we can then extend this to all 234 uh, G-protein cup receptor structures that are currently within the D, uh, database. Uh, under the PFAM entry of, of the seven transmembrane helices. Uh, and again, hopefully you can see this stripe-like pattern uh, of the contacts with the membrane, again showing the reproducibility. Um, we can then co compress this down to a consensus view uh, for either the A2A uh, or otherwise uh, the seven transmembrane receptor family. Um, zo zooming so it's, we've just got a single line per entry, uh, averaging the data across all the, the data that we have within Memphis MD. Um, so these are for the G-protein capital receptor family. We can then do something more and by aggregating the data from every single entry, all those three, three and a half thousand uh, entry, uh, membrane protein structures, look at the interactions that they may make with uh, the head group region of the protein, uh, the tail region, or otherwise the glycerol region, and then grouping this by amino acid type. Uh, and some of the sort of key things are that the hydrophobic residues, such as leucine and phenylalanine, form predominant contacts with the tail region, uh, the, 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 as one would expect. Um, whereas something like tryptophan or, or tyrosine uh, generally like to be in the head group region, or at least interacting with the glycerol. And this has been well known for many years uh, through biophysical measurements. Um, we can then flip this data on the side uh, and then show the top, uh, sorry, the, the, the inner leaflet and the outer leaflet of the membrane, and then show where each and every one of these residues are distributed with respect to the membrane. And again, uh, those hydrophobic residues are predominantly found within the membrane core, uh, whereas the more sort of um, positive charge residues, such as arsenic and lysine, uh, they're found interacting with the phosphate head groups, as one would expect. Um, now, this information is known about, uh, but it's good to see it uh, across all the membrane protein structures that have been solved. Um, so in terms of um, visualization, what we use is PV. Uh, and I hope you know, I won't mind too much the fact that uh, we use this. Um, so we've developed it to then provide this Memprot MD um, viewer. Um, but looking at the sort of successes that's happened with the NGL viewer, maybe, maybe we ought to switch so we can incorporate simulation data. Um, so it might be nice to have a, a switch where we can change from the Memprot MD viewer uh, to the NGL viewer. Uh, alternatively, I, I quite like Lightmol, uh, which the, the PDE uses, uh, which is a, a, another online uh, viewer, uh, just to, to give you another example. And so this is Memprot MD, uh, how we've integrated every single sort of component from uh, the initial finding of a, a membrane protein structure and then simulating those uh, systems. Uh, this is sort of integrated uh, in terms of how it's out. Uh, it's presented, and ultimately what I want to try and do is extend this to other membrane protein structures, ones that aren't integral membrane proteins, so therefore are not picked up by Memprot MD. And this includes a series of proteins called bacterial lipoproteins. These proteins go through set stages of maturation that include an extension from their, their core domain at the end terminus that's either anchored to the membrane by a helix, anchored to membrane by a helix and a lipid tether, just the lipid, lipid tether, or otherwise a triacyl lipid tether. So the lipoproteins go through each and every one of these stages. And so what I want to do is simulate each and every one of these stages to show 
therefore how the, this core region will interact with the, the head group region of the, pro, of the, uh, the bilayer rather than integral membrane protein structures. And so we've done this for all the lipoproteins for which there is a crystal structure uh, of E. coli bacterial lipoproteins, and there are 32 of these. And we can extend that by using modeling techniques such as fire uh, to then extend this to 84 of the 116 E. coli lipoproteins. Uh, but ultimately, uh, this information is not particularly intuitive just by staring at it. So what I would like to do is be able to share this data uh, so that people can engage and interact with this. And so tools like MDServe would absolutely help me um, by sharing this um, on, 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 and hosting it uh, locally. Um, why do we care about these proteins? Well, these proteins are really important to a number of bacterial processes. And I'll highlight a couple of these. And the bound system is really important for inserting outer membrane proteins into the bacterial outer membrane, whereas this LPT uh, transporter uh, is responsible for actually setting up uh, the outer leaflet of the outer membrane. So without the, these lipoproteins that are part of these key complexes, uh, the bacteria do not thrive. And so by inhibiting the production of these lipoproteins, uh, one could develop a new antibiotic. Um, I just want to fi finish by just talking about another membrane protein complex. I've talked about on this previous slide a number of membrane protein structures. Here I have an example of where we used Haddock um, to just bridge together each and every one of these components of the, the, the <coughs> uh, translocase. I won't go into the biology or the biochemistry associated with this protein. Uh, but ultimately we want to know how these single transmembrane helices interact with the, the core receptor component. And so we used co-evolution analysis to work out which contacts were uh, possible, and I won't go into the details of the co-evolution analysis, uh, but we saw a rather nice ladder-like interaction across the membrane between this uh, TAP-B subunit and the TAP-C subunit. And note that there are two binding sites, one at this side and one at the other side. I'll just initially use then Haddock uh, to bridge uh, TAP-B to TAP-C as described here, and we can then extend that further to then provide what will be likely the, the overall complex of the, 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 of the structure, either here in a trimeric unit or otherwise a tetrameric here. Um, so I really did, just for the purpose of saying to Alexander, thank you very much for Haddock, because uh, this is, a, I think, a fantastic methodology. Um, so this is the team, many thanks to Tom, um, who did a lot of the MEMPROS MD development, uh, and then I mentioned about the Life Protein Project, which was a joint effort between Shannon uh, and George. And thank you very much for your attention. Yes, in the back. Can we download the trajectories? So we can't download the trajectories. I think that's really important. It's not, we currently don't host, um, but I, I think we should get that on board. Yeah. And um, if you have, oh, sorry. Uh, it looks like that you have the starting structures and pilots who rerun them. Yes, those are Yeah, they're, they're all there. Yeah, they're all there. Yeah, so right. so right. it, it looks like that you can download the so, so, so well, the, 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 the MDP file is there and the initial start instruction yeah. will be so, so from the point of view in 10 years time if you want to rerun these simulations you can do yes. Alright, Chris Woods is up next.